All right, when this is um, taken apart, it essentially looks like this. This is the coil, and this is the solenoid, and they pretty much go together like this. We're going to put this coil into this location, and then the solenoid with the valve into this location. And then on the other side, there's a, a, a nut that goes that fastens everything together. And it's not super critical that this is really, really tight. It doesn't really need to be, as long as it's together and it's not going to come loose. You'll also need a fitting like this. It has a 1 8 inch um, sized uh, uh, tube fitting and you'll need a 1 16th inch tube fitting. The 1 8th is the inside diameter of this particular tube and this is the, um, it's considered a quarter inch tube. It's got an inside diameter of 1 8th and we're going to be using 1 16th. The 1 the, uh, the one eighth goes actually here. Oh, by the way, this is a female, this is the male. And these will all come together. So we're going to take this tube. You'll feed it through this hole, or this hole here. You're going to take the tube fitting, and then bring it all the way down. And we're going to screw in the the one sixteenth. And now we're going to take a one sixteenth, and we're going to take the hose out to the side. The other side of this tube will connect to the side of this nozzle. To keep this secure, we're going to use a wire tie underneath. It. You want to just make the wire tie go to the point where it's, or it's, secu it's securely adhered to the tube, but it's not uh, closing off any any airflow. Now it's not going to want to pop. It's not going to want to come up. It's very secure. All right, now I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so now it's as secure as it really needs to be. Um, the insulated wire will feed through this top um, sort of cutout here to to manage all of the wires. This, this is the first one that's going to come through. And we're going to be hooking up the motor wires and we're going to feed all the motor wires through the same through the same hole. We are wiring the motors in a certain way. We have the motors, the motor wires, the, the ones that you're going to get are already, going to, are already going to have wires. I had to solder these on because these are motors that I had for a while. Um, and the wires are going to go through this little section here on the, um, the Z-axis uh, nut of mount anti backlash nut mount. I'm going to go through this little area and we've wire tied it in the front. That's what these two holes are for. We're just training the wires going through here. Make sure that you have full travel with the wires, but you don't, you don't want too much. You don't want it to pull too much, but you want a tiny bit of slack, but you don't want too much slack at the same time. And you want to make sure that it's able to go the full distance. We're going to be putting another conduit on this area, so it it's, has a, a larger sort of um, area that, that keeps all the wires together and it doesn't bind in anything. The motors you're going to get actually will have the, um, will have the wires coming out of the motors and it'll have the, it'll also have the, the connectors at the other, at the other end. So um, you would need to use the motor uh, that has the appropriate connector and then just connect it right to the to where the motor is. Like this is a Z, a Z axis, you know that this motor has to be plugged into this connector. This is the A axis, so wherever you train the wires going through, you know you have to connect it to this location. Now we're going to put on the hose. We've already um, done this assembly here. Now we're going to take the 1 16th inch hose and bring it over to where we're going to put the suction pump. Okay, this is the the vacuum pump that I'm using, this is, a, this is um, by Virtual Industry, it's made for uh, picking and placing, generally the hand, um, the manual uh, type of picking and placing. I'm using this for the machine, so uh, I need to figure out where I'm going to put it. And my first thought was, actually I'm going to put it right here, so this is where I'm deciding to put it. Uh, I'm going to use wire ties to actually uh, adhere this to the, the machine. And I'm picking this place because this is holding the reels, so wire ties isn't really going to conflict with that. But on this side, I have drawers, so the wire ties would conflict with it. Possibly at a later um, time, I'll, I'll make some kind of shelf or whatever that it would be easier to, to mount this. But right now, wire ties are the, are the way to go. I'm just gonna drill four holes, which will be used for the, the in and out of the wire ties. We'll get some wire ties and tie this on. Okay, so we have we've put it on the side. Actually, this is really really tough. I'm probably going to 
I'm probably going to double this up just in case. I'm going to add uh, another set of uh, wire ties just to uh, just to just in case one fails, I can I can uh, uh, be ensured that it won't fall down. And anyway, in any rate, um, these are pretty tight, and if, if even if both fail, they, it'll just sort of hang and it won't fall to the ground. Um, this is not the most elegant solution, but it works. And maybe in another version, I will probably have something. Um, like maybe in the cabinet that is uh, suited for this. I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take this one sixteenth tube, and it's going to come from here all the way to the vacuum over there. But I need it to be protected, so I'm going to be using a conduit, which is this black um, hose-looking thing right here. So I'm going to feed this in. This is going to be actually kind of tricky because it's this is silicone, and it's going to be difficult to get the silicone easily through. You're just gonna have to like twist it or do whatever you can to get it in. I could do it on the side of it, but I found it easier to do it this way. Twisting it seems to work fine. I'm almost all the way through now. Okay, so I'm gonna get it to the point where I can essentially plug this in here, and then I'm going to wire tie it around the fitting. I'm gonna take a small wire tie. And this should secure it to the to the fitting mostly. Okay. That's pretty secure. Now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna actually do the conduit around here first. See if all these wires can fit in the small conduit. It should be fine. I'm gonna wire tie the end here so it stays put. All right, I'm going to wire tie everything. Now we want to put this in a safe place, namely in this particular location. This is the the inlet for the back. It's okay if it hangs down like this. It's it's not gonna snag anywhere since well let's do a test real quick. Travel. Everything seems to be working fine. And ample cable, except for this one. This one I'm a little bit concerned about, but I'm still able to get to the end. Alright, I'm going to snip off these little things. I can, I can still do some wire tying over here. I'm going to cut them off. Okay, so now we are essentially done with the hardware aspect of the machine. Now we will start to work on, on the software side of things. Uh, well, I'll show you the G-code that I'm using, which is actually a short uh, run of G-code. Well, it takes care of uh, any adjustments that need to be made because of uh, the distance between the, the end effector and the camera. Uh, also looks at the steps per inch for the three axes, the degrees for the rotation of the of the end effector. So next video we'll get started on, on the software portion.